We've been evacuated. A program of records made and presented by Olive Shapley. Hello, Mum and Dad. Don't get uh, worried about us. We're all very happy here. And uh, I don't think anybody wants to go home yet. We go on the moors nearly every night and watch all the cows and the sheep grazing and the river flowing. We're quite near it now. And uh, we go playing football on the football pitch and uh, watch the colliery. Last week, uh, the boys and girls had a match of netball and uh, there was 14 girls and uh, two, uh, three boys, but the girls won us. If all the children who have been evacuated were given the chance to talk to their parents over the air, I think this is the kind of message that most of them would want to send. We took our recording van last week to a small Lancashire mill town about 15 miles from Manchester and found almost without exception that the children there were happy, excited by their new life and pleased with the new friends they were making. When we arrived, the streets were given over to children. The high school girls sauntering arm in arm up the main street in their tidy brown uniforms, children playing football in the steep cobbled side streets, children going shopping for their new mothers, children making friends with policemen and ARP wardens. We finally fixed on a crowd of children from one of Manchester Central schools who were leaning over a wall hopefully looking for fish in a very dirty mill stream. Most of them were carrying front door keys. Their new parents were working in the mills, and the children, who had only been in the town three days, were already custodians of the little grey stone houses. They were very ready to talk to us, but a little shy of the microphone at first. Now, what about you two? What's your name? Cynthia Green. How old are you? Fourteen. And you're? Francis Ravenscroft, fourteen. And you were both evacuated on... on September, September the 1st. <laughs> we know all about that. Um, and... Uh, hi, how are you liking it? What do you think about it all? I think it's very nice and we've been taken into the homes of the people with uh, made very homely on the first night and uh, everybody's very everybody's jolly. jolly and everybody speaks to you. And as they came from one of Manchester's most crowded street areas, I asked them what they thought of the country. Is it very different from uh, from town life, do you think? Oh, yeah. oh yes, it's a lot nicer than the town life. We uh, you can... more fit. <laughs> I mean, the country air is a lot different than the town air, and oh, a lot nicer in the country than it is in town, especially Manchester. <laughs> you don't feel homesick or anything? No, no not got don't. a chance for that. Do you think any of them do, even the young ones? Oh, I don't think any of them, not even the young ones feel homesick. They all had stories to tell about the journey, that astonishingly orderly and uneventful exodus of September the 1st. And here's one small boy's description of his arrival at his billet. I just went in and uh, <coughs> they said, uh, that, look, they've sent us a little boy. And, uh, and I took my coat off and I asked if I could go out. And he said yes. So I went out and started playing in the streets. But during the three days he'd been there, he'd found other things to do. A whole new world had opened up for him. Now, anybody else got anything to say? There's, Come on, uh, the boy. An old, there's an old uh, castle on the hill, it's uh, a ruin, and uh, we went on the moors last uh, last week and uh, started playing in it. And uh, we looked down in the town and it looked all right. Looked all right, then? Yes, we could see right across the town. And it's uh, nice food here, yeah, and it's nice. And it, there's a lot of country you can play in and have some fun. But evacuation has its problems, as we soon found out. It w we'd have a nice holiday, I think, if it wasn't for the girls that have to qu that are with us. Here They're always uh, interfering and spoiling our games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll say. Do you find that you've been put with your friends mostly in the houses? Yes, um, as far as it was possible, they paired us off with the boys and our girls that we wanted to be with. But in the course of conversation, we found out that Willie had other problems, too. Hey, Willie, is it true you were kissed by a teacher? Yes, on the first night we went to the house, she says, Boys, I'm going to behave like a mother to you. And she kissed us good night and tucked us in. Poor Willie. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it was terrible. And, uh, at any rate, now at night we stay out until she's gone to bed. At this point, we thought it was time to ask one of the children who lived in the town what he thought of this evacuation business. 
And what do you think about evacuation? Well, it's been carried out all right. I've got two girls in our house and I've had a very nice time showing them around. I was a little bit disappointed when they brought two girls to the house. I'd expected two boys, but they're turning out all right anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You'll train them. <laughs> yes, I've been showing them all around the countryside and make up. It's not a very large town to, the, to Manchester, but they say they like it. Did you notice, by the way, how different his dialect was from the Mancunian of the other children, and that in a town not 15 miles from Manchester? And here are some of the grown-ups of the town to give their views. If some of you mothers in other parts of the country are still worried about the welcome your children will have, these records may help to reassure you a little. Uh, Mrs. Hindle, you haven't got any children, I understand. No, I have no room or else I would have liked them. And my little girls cried every night because I wouldn't have any. So I'd go and find one, but if I had have done with have been crushed, or else I would have too. And I wouldn't have minded a little one because I could have pushed one in, but... She wanted one her size, and I couldn't possibly manage it. How big's your family? Two, a girl and a boy, but with only two bedrooms. Oh, well, you so couldn't, you no, couldn't really have one. Not at all, no. And you're really disappointed that yes, you can't. Yes, I would have liked one. Well, I expect there's a lot of things you can do, even without uh, having them in your house. I mean, you yes, can help it, entertain yes. them and that. My children go playing with them, like. With and they, they like having them here, I suppose. The yes, yes, they do. And there's lots. A little girl next door to us, she says she's coming living here after she's married. She... Here's Mrs. Howarth. There's no doubt about her feelings either. Now, Mrs. Howarth, I believe you've got two children billeted with you, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Yes, and they're very nice girls, too. One thirteen and one ten in September this month. And uh, we've had a grand time together. I've been married 16 years with no children of my own and I'm very glad to have these two girls for I've always longed for two and we've been over the hills rambling and running about and we have a girl Frances, their friend with them, she comes and goes out with us and on Sunday tea we had a party for them and Lyman's buff and I didn't seek all the games we could think of, and I, I think they had a grand time. They're here with me now, and they're thinking of going swinging this afternoon, enjoying themselves. What does your husband think about it? Oh, he's glad to have them. He's just thrilled at having them, and I, he says he hopes to stay forever. And here's another housewife from the same town. She has two children of her own, but she's no less ready to welcome the newcomers. I asked her if she could manage on the money she had for them. And you find you can manage on the government allowance for them? Yes, yes, I, I, of course, uh, we've only had them a few days yet, and they're not bad to suit. I ask them what they'd like, and uh, they just say that as long as it's their own cooked food, they're satisfied. They've had uh, cooked dinner each day, and uh, the... Uh, I asked each of them yesterday what they'd like for tea and uh, they said, oh, anything. I said, do you like uh, homemade chips? They said, yes, we love them. And uh, they both had a second helping of them and enjoyed them. Well, at this point in our recording, the mill opposite began to empty for the midday break and the children rushed across the road to look for their foster parents and in one or two cases to drag them up to the microphone. Mr. Brown, in dungarees and clogs and probably wanting to get home to his dinner, stopped for a moment to tell us of the two girls that had been billeted on him. The people have made them very welcome here and uh, done all they could for them. And the children seem to be enjoying themselves. What did your wife think about it? Well, my wife was... Uh, she had been sick when uh, I was under the doctor. And I have been helping to look after the girl myself. Does it mean much extra work for you? Well, just a little, you know. A bit of homework. Cleaning up and tidying, looking after them. But you didn't mind? Well, I didn't mind, no. Yeah, everything for the best. Because we all have to help one another. And I felt everywhere that in this little town, at least, evacuation had brought a great deal of joy and that the mothers of these children need have no fears. The girls, the girls are 
quite content. They seem to have chummed up with their new sisters and new brothers, and they are already playing games and rounders and uh, one thing and another. And it's quite the fashion these days for parties of 20 and 30 to set off on little hiking expeditions and take their lunch baskets. And of course, they're all carrying their gas masks. Safety first, they're playing. But of course, children weren't the only ones to be evacuated. And when the news of the recording van had spread through the town, some of the mothers with young children who had left Manchester on the second day arrived with perambulators and shopping baskets to tell their story. The home that I'm in was a, a newly married couple and the home is exceedingly beautiful, a beautiful home indeed. And they both go out to work, so uh, of course I keep myself and the two little ones and uh, I try to make up to them by cleaning up for them, little things like that, leaving the table prepared, prepared for dinner time. And I uh, come out of the house with the kiddies so that uh, they can, when they come home to dinner, they've only got to sort of get it ready and they have the privacy of their own home at dinner time. And uh, they're making quite a fuss of the children now that I felt rather uncomfortable at, uh, on first arriving there. And uh, with it being such a lovely home and with being uh, new, everything so new, and of course you can't tie kiddies down as everyone knows, but uh, I've uh, lost all that uh, embarrassment now and they're quite at home and so are we. And this strange experiment can only be worked successfully and without too much unha unhappiness on either side if everyone is a, as considerate as Mrs. Dennison. But the mothers we talked to had one grievance. They hadn't enough to do. They were used to running a home of their own and looking after a large family, and they weren't sure that they liked this enforced idleness. Good idea. Yes. What do you do with your spare time? I suppose you've got more spare time here than you had at home. Well, that is the only trouble. I'm not used to an idle life, and... Uh, where we're saying they don't want us to do anything, they want us to try and make a holiday of it. But uh, we would rather help them. But they tell us to go out and get the benefit of the fresh air while we can, because they know that we've had uh, just an ordinary, hard-working life at home, and they tell us to make the best of it while we're here. We talked to many mothers in this little town, but the stories didn't vary much. Most of them had felt a great desire to get back to their husbands when they heard that we were at war, and they weren't finding it easy to stay on even though they were in a safe area. And here, finally, is the youngest child we interviewed. He was two and a half. And from this rather one-sided conversation, we can get some idea of how well he was treated. Here, tell this lady what you've got in that. You've got a nice... Got a nice boat. Got a nice boat. And the lady gave you a cut. Did the lady give you a cut? Yes. And, and what has it got? Hey? Nice clothes, hasn't it? Yeah. And the lady gave us a wash bowl for you, hasn't she? Yeah. And a table specially for you. Yeah. And hasn't she been very nice? Yeah. Hey? And do you like being here? Yeah. And we go always going tatters, aren't we? Hey? Yes. <laughs> tell them, tell them. Here, don't be silly. Here, I want to talk to you. Tell them, it's like, isn't it like when Mummy and Daddy went to the Isle of Man, didn't we? Yeah. And we're always going out, aren't we? Getting yeah. washed and then we go out again. Yeah. Don't we? <laughs> and he's had a lot of nice toys, haven't you? And here is Terence's mother summing up the whole situation. And uh, the children are quite happy. Just uh, they want little toys, of course, and they ask for the moon. Still, we, they're doing very well, and uh, I think they're quite delighted with it. That's because they think they're on holiday, and we're keeping all, trying to keep all the fears of everything as regards the war out, out of their little minds, and uh, they're very happy indeed. The foster parents may not be able to give their new children the moon, but they will do all that they can to make them happy in their new homes and to keep fears away from them. And you mothers who've had to send your children away and are worried and unhappy about them, if you were in a position to receive these refugee children, 
Would you harden your hearts against them and refuse them comfort and affection? Of course not, and neither will anyone else.